Huh? Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. I'm your boy Lace, and if I could spend all of my life savings of $5 on gadget games, I would. But today, let's talk about a potentially accelerated schedule and what that means for you and me actually. So what is an accelerated schedule? It's exactly as it sounds. It's a schedule that has been sped up. In the context of Princess Connect, this means that Crunchyroll could potentially have taken like the events, the patches, the updates, and all the associated timelines from like an existing distribution of the game. So typically this is like the Japanese and decided to say, hey, there's actually three years worth of content. Why don't we shorten the length of some of these activities so that the global gang can experience these faster? Wow, that's great, isn't it? Eventually we could even have like parody and release with the Japanese server. Here is an alternative translation and something a lot of experienced gacha players will think. Why don't we accelerate the timeline so that everyone has less of a gem income and more content to consume so they can't just roll and save and roll for everyone that they want. We could actually potentially squeeze more money for them to make sure that they get their ultimate anime waifus because they have the same to spend in a shorter amount of time. It's business. It is what it is. You guys can form your own opinions about it. So why am I talking about an accelerated schedule then? Let me make a big, big disclaimer here. This is something that might happen, okay? So what suggests this is actually the duration of the Jun banner. In all of the other servers, Jun's banner has lasted for 15 days. For us, it's lasting 10 days. And you know, it could be an outlier, which would invalidate a lot of this video, but let's talk about this just in case, okay? Because it would be very weird that they would only make one banner last for 10 days and the rest of them last for 15 days. So let's start this off with an estimation of our gem income. Just a quick summary, based on the JP server from dailies, we'll get 20 gems over 30 days. So that's 600. Lunar Tower, we get 1500. New events give us 2000 or 2K. I say 20. Rerun events give us 2k, new stages and new hard mode about 1.5k approximately. Clan battles between 500 to 5000 depending on how you actually place for your clan's performance. Just by participating you get 500 already. Arenas I'm averaging at about like 40 a day. It can vary from like 10 to 300 depending on how you place by 30 days. So with an average of 40 that comes out to about like 1200 gems. So with this being said a conservative estimate of all of these is about you get about 9000 gems a month. And keep in mind that the majority of this content is actually not even available so this is this is not even like well, kind of like today if you place higher in pvp and or clan battle then obviously you'll get more but let's take this conservative estimate and obviously we assume that crunchyroll is as generous as Psygames, games which is really not a fair assumption to be honest because most people are not as generous as Psygames. games hopefully we'll also be getting roles every so often for events such as like anniversary and half anniversary and all of that so the next part we need to look at is where your gems are going there are really only two places that you could spend them right refreshing and pulling let's assume that you refresh maybe like three times a day or something, something that's kind of negligible and you're more focused on like pulling. Again, at this point, it's not about the calculations for the refreshes because they're only going to be a tiny, tiny fraction of what you'll be spending on pulling. The key here is that if we are actually receiving banners at a faster rate, this means that we actually have less time to save up for them. So for example, fan subbing has actually provided their banner list. Um, he's got the JP dates up all of here. For example, originally from today, we had like maybe three months to save for Ilya, but Ilya instead came in two months and we would only have like two months worth of savings to actually prepare for that, right? And then after that, instead of three months for prefers, it's only two months again. So again, we lose out on another month's worth of gem income. Our buying power has been diminished. And over time, this is just going to stack up and it's going to get worse and worse. And again, to top it off, we don't even have like half. I don't even know if we have like 70% of these gem income sources. And this is especially going to hurt us at the start, especially when there is uh, such cute waifus like Arisa. But also we've got like Kyoka, we've got the Ilya, we've got the uh, Summer Kiaru. There's, there's so much going on, to be honest, in the first six months. So what exactly does this mean for us? So it just means that we don't to be smarter. Today, there's not really any like immediate action that we need to do, but you kind of just need to keep watching the banners as they come out, as well as the events. Because what's equally as important is that we need to watch our gem income as well. Maybe they do fast track events. Maybe they give us something that kind of helps us like match up that gap, right? Again, I highly doubt it. I've just never seen a publisher kind of like trying to make up for that gap when they accelerate a schedule. And it's for these reasons that we need the content to come ASAP. The events, the Lunar Tower, the clan battle, etc. But that's that's not something we can control, right? What we can control control. Let's go back to talking about where to put our gems or to plan it, to plan it. Again, first of all, as you already know, waifu is over meta. You already know who you want. Just keep saving for them. You freaking do it. And Godspeed to you guys. If you're starting today, no brainer. You reroll for Jun and Makoto. That's your reroll target. And then you don't roll from then on. You guys are probably going to have the easiest time in terms of saving because there are a lot of people who started uh, at like launch or like soft launch and they had to spend like maybe 150, 300 rolls for Jun or whatever. And this accelerates schedule is just not going to help at all. The next group of people we need to talk about are like the ones who haven't rolled for Jun yet because again Jun is on right now and and you're also kind of like looking for the meta picks. I think it's safe-ish to roll for Jun and here's why. For the next few months we have like Arisa, we have Kyoka, we have 
Ilya, we have uh, Summer Kiaru. Obviously, I skipped over the two stars. I hope that's a no-brainer for you guys because these two stars, they are not limited. They will be added to the standard pool. They could spook you one day or the other. And a lot of them actually become farmable, so don't worry about the two stars. Honestly, a lot of these characters are even farmable as well. Like I mentioned in my Jun video, even Jun becomes farmable and actually is partially given through an event. Now, what this means is that if we do notice that the banners are speeding up, then we do need to choose a bit more carefully. So let's do kind of like a priority. So from here until the first prefest, I would say like the targets would be like Jun, it would be Kyoka, if you can, Ilya, Summer Kiaru, and the uh, Christina from the actual prefest itself. Now, if we had to start cutting down and shaving down the excess ones, first I would shave down is Kyoka. Kyoka is strong, but like she's not like everyone else dummy strong. After that, I would shave off Jun unless you're an arena player. So again, remember guys, we need to prioritize between arena and clan battle. If you're a clan battler, you prioritize Jun, you prioritize Summer Kiaru, and you prioritize uh, Christina down here. Okay. If you're an arena player, you forget about Jun. You could go for someone else, but your main target actually is Ilya. You're still going for Summer Kiaru because and as always, you're going for Christina. Christina is always top priority. Let's take that further. Prefez is always top priority. Okay, so let's say that you don't actually care about arena or clan battle. You're kind of like collecting or you're FOMOing or whatever. Then your life is both easier and harder at the same time. You're going to be rolling on all of the limited banners, such as like summer, Halloween, Christmas, New Year's, Prefez, uh, etc. And honestly, that's going to be a really, really rough time. Remember guys, I am not fear mongering. I have made an observation and seen that there is potentially going to be tough times ahead. Potentially. And I'm trying to prepare you all for that. I've got my own priority set i'm going to be very cautious i'm going to be monitoring how many gems i actually get like per month as the game goes on and for the next six or eight months or whatever whenever prefez is i'll prioritize number one christina the prefez unit absolutely broken good and everything then summer kiara because she's cute and also limited but she also performs well in clan battle which is kind of my priority after that it's Ilya because i want more, a little bit more magic attack for my arena comp so, so you can see next six to eight months i'm only prioritizing like three characters and that's if i can if i had to drop one off i would drop Ilya because she's not limited and you could get spooked by her could keyword is could we all know how rng is after this if my gem income is higher i would consider kyoka because again i like the magic attack by like a magic attack i mean i have no magic attack and so that's a really big gap i'm actually needing to fill i wish i could have gotten like you know the summer pekrin the summer tamaki and the orissa from Shadowverse. if you guys didn't know and and some of the others but this is how it is like i don't know guys like who are you who are you going for let me know because i think i've got my list sorted out but maybe you guys some of you have like a little bit of insight a little more insight than me i don't always get things right so let me know with that being said i think you guys get the video here's here's a quick summary we might 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 get an accelerated schedule might the lack of content currently especially at the start of the game is going to really really hinder our gem income which is which is going to squeeze us further and guys that's not my pp prioritize who you really want start with the two to three units for the next six months up until prefez and it's got to include christina but also think of the nice to haves in case they do be nice to us which i still doubt but you know just just in case as always waifu first and then top priority Christina and then for CB and for generally Summer Kiaru Arena Ilya 100% don't be scared just pay attention monitor and keep up with me you know I'll, I'll be keeping you guys updated and yes we do get content faster but we're probably going to get squeezed like hell that being said this is the end of the video here is the secret message of the day don't squeeze me senpai if you could drop that message down below it would really mean a lot to me it means that you've actually made it to the end of the video it shows me that a whole bunch of you have actually watched my crappy content and it really helps because I have put so many hours into these as always thank you all so much for watching if this video has helped you out at all please consider dropping like a like or a follow or a sub or whatever it is come join the discord if you have any questions or if you just want to hang out talk shit about precon and stuff and come join my stream if you have some time to kill otherwise i will see you guys in the next video thank you again so much bye bye